Seth Green here, super excited for what I'm sure you will find a fascinating set of interviews with my longtime friend and client, Ted Thomas. Ted, you are in a very unusual business that most people don't know about. I'm not sure actually many of our people will even believe the type of returns your student investors generate. Can you tell my audience a little bit about your business? So it's a simple business, but it suddenly becomes complicated when you don't know it. So just be patient for a second. But nationwide, the legislatures of all the states have made a rule. And the rule is very simple. It's this. All property owners, doesn't matter a commercial property, single family home, industrial property, golf course, whatever it is, everybody that owns property has to pay a property tax. It's a very small tax, 1% or 2%, but everybody has to pay it. All right, now there are thousands, actually millions of people nationwide that don't pay their property tax. So what happens? Well, the local county, because the legislature has told them they have to do that, the local county will lien a property. That's a claim against the property to collect that. That's what a tax lien certificate is. It's simply a claim to collect the taxes. All of the states sell tax defaulted property. So it's as simple as that. You must pay the tax. If you don't, the county is gonna foreclose on your property. Basically, they call it confiscate and seize the property, and then they sell it for pennies. They don't want the property. They just sell it off for pennies, and that's where the opportunity lies, and we're going to talk about that today. Okay. Can you explain to me, uh, I, I mean, a little bit about how the tax lien certificate works? I get the concept of the county's got to get their money, and they have the rights to take my property if I don't pay. How do the tax lien certificates work? How do I, as an individual investor, benefit from this? Okay, well, in that counties that sell tax lien certificates, and half of the counties in the United States, about 1,500 of the counties sell tax certificates, and what the county simply does is they send you a note, they call that a notice of default, and they say, you haven't paid your tax, would you please pay the tax? Now, if you don't, they'll send numerous of those, then they'll file a lien, which is a claim, a claim against the property. Then, then, then they suddenly, they put up a tax lien that looks just like this, okay? So that tax lien certificate, all right, is issued, Anybody can now pay your tax. So I could pay your tax. Seth could pay your tax. If you're in one of those states, you would have the taxes paid. All right. Now that the tax has been paid, but you still owe it. All right. So they're going to give you three years in some states, two years in other states to pay those taxes. And if you don't pay the tax, you're going to lose the property. So if you're an investor, this is a super safe investment because you don't invest with Ted, don't invest with Seth. You invest directly with the county. And then if they're, when they pay their tax, the county's going to send you a check and you could earn 60% up to 18, up to 24% on a tax lien certificate. So horrendous rates of return. Certainly could, uh, in, in a guaranteed way, um, beat uh, a, a lot of investments that our folks are probably using right now, especially those in the stock market. I won't get you off on your soapbox about that. Can... Yeah. You tell me a little bit about, because you mentioned taxing certificates and you mentioned tax defaulted property. Talk about tax defaulted property. Okay, so why don't we do a comparison? You'll be in uh, New York and I'll be in Florida. So in New York state, if you don't pay your tax, what the local county will do. Now, the local county just didn't make this up. The legislature of the state of New York said, all right, county treasurer, all right, and tax collector, you must collect tax on each one of these properties. So they'll send a notice of default, numerous, usually two or three. If the people don't pay the tax, they will actually confiscate. They'll take the property away. They'll push the owner off the property. And now they'll take that property and they'll take the loan that's on the property. because so you have a mortgage on the property. Now in California, they have a deed of trust, but they have a mor mortgage. They X out the mortgage. They wipe the mortgage off the property. And then they sell that property at auction for whatever they can get. The starting bid will be the back taxes Whatever they can get for that property, they sell it at auction. Okay, so you said they wipe out the mortgage. How do they? What happens to the mortgage holder? What happens to the bank? Well, the bank is on title when they, just like a person is on title. So the bank is notified. Anytime they send, it's called due process of law. And I'm not an attorney, but it works like this. When they send a notice of default, that's the start of a due process of law. Notice of default simply said, if you don't pay your tax, we're going to confiscate your property. Confiscate means they're going to seize the property. They're going to take it away. They're going to push you off the property. They send the same notice to the bank. Unfortunately for all of us, the banks are a little on the lazy side. 
And when they get that notice of default, which is a registered notice, the, the girl that is an intern probably, oh, registered thing, okay, I'll put that over here in this drawer. Well, you can't put it in the drawer, you have to answer it. So they notify the bank just like they notify the property owner. If the banker does not show up and pay the tax, you see, anybody can stop a tax auction instantaneously, just pay the tax, all right? But people don't understand what we're talking about. And these rules have been around for over 200 years. So the bank gets so many of these that they don't bother to say, oh no, we should protect our interest of this outstanding mortgage in a property. They don't pay the tax and then try and get the money from the homeowner. So the bank lose. So if I still owe the bank 180 grand on a $360,000 house, I didn't pay my property tax. The county takes my property. The bank loses the 180 grand they got left because they didn't show. The property owner refused to, didn't pay their property tax. They get kicked out of their house. And then the county is gonna sell my $360,000 house for whatever they can get for it. And somebody buys that. Who buys my property and give me just, I know it's gonna vary all over the county, all over the map. What type of discount to the retail value are we buy, are you okay. buying properties at? Okay, so we're buying at horrendous about 50, 70%, even up to 80% discounts. Now, how do I get numbers like that? So in a place like New York, let's say, let's just use a mythical property. Think of a colonial home. Everybody would know what a colonial would look like. Maybe it's on three or four acres because they have a lot of land there. So so they have a, a nice a nice a nice area for the, for the property. However, it's used and abused. It hasn't been painted, it hasn't been cleaned up. All right, now the people that didn't pay the tax, they probably weren't paying the mortgage and they're probably not taking care of the house. So if it doesn't look too pretty on the outside, probably doesn't look too pretty on the inside. So it's used and abused, all right? So that property auction will start at the back taxes because all the county wants is the back taxes. County can't keep the property. They have to sell it at auction. So they're gonna sell it at auction. Believe it or not, some of these auctions today are starting at $100, even in the state of California. All right, so now they're gonna auction the property highest bidder will get it. So I have paid in, in the state of New York 30 and 40 cents on the dollar. But if it was a $400,000 property, 40 cents on the dollar is 160,000. Think of the margin I had on that property, do some paint, do some cleanup, fix the kitchens, and then resell them. So those properties have margins of 30% to 50% for people that know what the heck they're doing. Now, you mentioned that there could be an auction that starts as little as $100 considering the back taxes. Why would somebody risk losing their house? I mean, for me as a financially responsible person, I'm trying to understand why would you risk, let's say, losing your entire house and getting kicked out onto the street for 100 bucks in property taxes? Well, that's a good question. It's really a good question. I'm gonna put it this, as I'm gonna put a title over the top of it. The world of the weird, okay? There are many, many people that came to the country as immigrants. There's many people that got older. They paid for their property, paid for everything. Okay, they just they just either got too old and didn't pay. Sometimes someone passes away. If they pass away and there's no heirs to take that property, it's gonna go to tax foreclosure. Why? Because the government can't just let the properties rot there. They would ruin every neighborhood because properties would just be deteriorating. So they take those properties, they, they confiscate them, and then they resell them back into the market so they can take them off a defaulted list and put them over on paying tax list. Well, the day they sell that property, it comes back on the tax roll again and starts paying, all right? All right, now who loses these properties? Sometimes these properties are just people that have tuned out. There's people that have turned to drugs. There are people that, that have just walked away. Now, in places like New York, where people couldn't sell, they believe they couldn't sell, sometimes they just move away and walk away. Sometimes, People forget they own a property. For example, there's, there's a lot of recreational land in the state of New York, okay, up in the mountains, ski lodges and things like that. I bought ski lodges with 2,500 square feet worth $150,000. I bought them for 20 and $30,000 because people forgot they had them. They were from Florida, they didn't want to go skiing anymore, they just forgot it. That's hard to believe, but people do that. The same as they do with cars. They just abandon it and forget it. So all kinds of people, now they're not, throwing people into the streets. They're not doing that. They do, you do have to sometime evict people, but the, the people, they've already tuned out of life is what's happened. Okay, thank you for clarifying and correcting me. So is the tax lien certificate tax defaulted business complicated? 
No, no, it's pretty simple. Now, tax lead certificates are the simplest ones, but New York doesn't do that, so let's talk about Florida. In Florida, we have, in the month of May and June, they will sell, this is hard to believe, they will sell one million tax lien certificates. Now, it's just a piece of paper, okay? So you can raise your hand at the auction. You're going to buy this piece of paper. You're going to pay the face value of it. The face value is the taxes. All you do when you buy a tax certificate is pay someone else's taxes. You're saying, I don't want to pay my own tax. Why would I pay someone else? Well, you pay someone else's taxes because in Florida, you can earn all the way up to 18% on a tax certificate. Now, do you think they all sell at 18%? No, because people bid them down to 8 and 10% because they're so anxious to get certificates. So when these certificates are sold in Florida, there's a, there's a million certificates sold in the state of Florida. It's a very simple investment. You can't invest with me. You're going to invest with the county. That is absolutely incredible, folks. We don't have, we are just scratching the surface here. We're going to be back with Ted Thomas. Make sure that you watch for the next email with the next video in it. And make sure you check out the link we're going to put in here to a very special training that Ted is holding for our audience. We will see you in the next video.